、えー、皆様こんにちは。Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the、uh, Tokyo Nutrition Summit Ministry for Agriculture, Fishery and Forestry Official Side Event Session 7. My name is Yutaka Arai, Chair of this session. The, the Ministry, in the theme of the Nutrition Summit, the Ministry holds a seven day session with the hope to contribute to the establishment of the healthy, sustainable food system and to leading to the sustainable development of Japanese agriculture and food industries. And we are grateful to have this session very successfully with a great support from you. So, we'd like to review and look back the seven sessions we covered today and yesterday. So, we covered seven sessions with different themes, especially、uh, with a great consideration of the each chairperson. We actually had a chance to get the feedback from the、uh, university students and many participants from the university and graduate schools. And we have very active discussion. Internationally, and I feel that now we are facing to the same direction and on the same page. So, let me summarize about the discussions. First,、uh, the first point I'd like to make is Earth, region, and individuals are all connected. The corona catastrophe has to reveal the vulnerability of the existing food system. The pandemic shows the,、uh, the global issue are more severe, affecting those vulnerable people. In society. That's another thing we see, along with the increase of the famine and also starvation. So, in order to strengthen our resilience society, of a society it is critical to create more compact regional based,、um, regional based smaller e c o s y s t e m in order to leave anyone left behind. However, considering the increasing number of the world population, in order to maintain good health, Of everyone, we do need more innovation which e n a b l e us to make our societies sustainable. This is actually well highlighted throughout the discussion. The second question, the thing I came across is that what is partnership to this question?、Uh, international society and organization, NGO, many participants in different groups joined the sessions. But the activity or the support. And they provide. It's not just one way communication, one way action. Rather, it's a kind of mutual cooperation and understandings by which the partnership between government or private or private and somebody else should not be a stand alone, but we should somehow comprehensively approach how we can do and what we can do together. The third point the food culture. And nutrition. The nutrition is not just for the health of the people, but also meet the condition and requirement in the environment to, in order to be sustainable. And for that, the food and nutrition health of the local community is the key. So, the food culture, in the context of the key phrase sustainable food culture, means that what is available in the local market. By the local producer, and how we can take advantage fully of these precious products from the land. In that sense,、um, maintaining and enshrining, in a way, the local food culture in one hand, at the same time, we should think about how to、um, enhance and empower the local community along with the context of the nutrition development. As for、sure, this time, we got the input from the college students. As one of the c o m m e n t says, that the,、um, the agriculture and also food production, food culture, to be solely originated from the local community and land and location of that production site. So, then having said that, lastly, I'd like to also put the sense of、um, ethics, the responsibility. Of the producer and responsibility of consumers, as stated in SDGs. The responsibility of the producer, at the same time, consumers' responsibility is quite important, as highlighted in a discussion as change of their behavior. And that really leads us for how we should supposed to act towards the future. So these are the key aspects I highlighted. 
based on my observation of the session so far. Having said that, let me go on to the session seven. So session seven considers the message from Japan to the global society. All the stakeholders in this summit are requested to make the commitment and make announcement. With that, the Tokyo uh, summit ask also the top management of the companies to show their commitment and also the endorsement. And with that, we collected all the leaders from the company. So, President Ando, please. Thank you very much for your introduction. I am the CEO of the Nishin Group Holdings. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, extend my appreciation for the MAF and other related partners who have uh, organized and then holding the N4G Summit 2021. I feel so honored to uh, participate this conference. Since its establishment over 60 years, the, our company has been contributing to the betterment of the people's lives, health, and also nutrition. So I would like to review our history and also would like to share uh, some of our plan for the future. So right after the war, uh, right after the shortage of the uh, food that the people, uh, hungry people are really there and then people actually die from the malnutrition. They found that Momofuku Ando, uh, they uh, really felt that the food is most critical. Uh, even though you have the clothes, houses, and also art, unless you have a food, you can't really survive. So everyone uh, should be able to eat uh, something which has high nutrition value. So uh, he came up with the uh, chicken ramen, which is the world first instant ramen or noodle. And this was the beginning of the Nishin group. And the Ando's philosophy uh, were expressed in four different founding tenets. It can be interpreted as the uh, uh, missions. The peace will come to the world when there is enough food and also the create foods to serve society and eat wisely for beauty and in health. And also food related jobs are sacred profession. So these four are the founding tenets of the uh, Nishin group. 1958, the Momofuku Ando came up with the chicken ramen and uh, at that time, uh, they had five different development principles. As you can see on the screen, delicious taste, safety, convenience, preservability, affordability. So these five principles, uh, over 60 years, the instant rurals uh, have uh, uh, grown uh, over these five principles platform. But three years ago, 2018, the uh, uh, World uh, Instant Noodle Association uh, had a summit. And uh, in this 2018 summit, uh, the nutrition and health and also environmental sustainability, two additional uh, principles were added to this. So right now, there are seven different principles. So instant noodles uh, always reflect the needs and the demand of the uh, people of the world. So Nishon uh, Group has uh, uh, diversified the business, not just uh, instant noodle, but we always focus on well-being and sustainability. As for the wellness, we have a strength of the creativities and also with the food tech, we try to explore new possibility of the food and then try to eliminate overeating and also hidden malnutrition. Especially the people can eat something they like at their uh, convenient time so that we try to get the well-balanced 
um, between the different nutrients such as carbohydrate and also the fats and also protein. So 33 different uh, type of the uh, ingredients and uh, we are currently working on the wholesome food. So at this moment, this the uh, uh, total nutrient um, food, the uh, weight and also uh, fat and also presenteeism and also the uh, blood um, uh, tests, then we see uh, improvement in all of the cases so that we can actually prevent the people to uh, get uh, sick. So uh, medical experts also evaluate this. So through this, that we really want to make sure that the Japanese people don't get sick. When it comes to environment, the earth, and also uh, we have to have an earth-friendly business. And uh, we call this Earth Food Challenge 2030. We have to minimize the uh, environmental load onto the earth so that uh, uh, plant-based uh, protein have to be increased in our products. And also for the future, we are working on the cultured meat to make it commercial. So from now on, I would like to talk about the four different commitment of a niching group. The first one is a wellness product. At this moment, the uh, obesity and also diabetics are caused by the uh, overnutrition. And furthermore, the malnutrition, uh, which includes the undernutrition, is also a problem. So niching food group uh, promote the uh, health and uh, nutrition properties all of our products. And then we are planning to increase the sales to 23 billion yen by 2030 to contribute to the people's wellness. Second one is food allergen tests. They, we have to improve the situation of the people who has food allergen and also um, the social issues are really related to the uh, health and also the uh, uh, allergen related issues. So, uh, so far we have heard, we have done the food allergen tests and also we will conduct more than 100,000 allergen tests in total by 2030. So at this moment we all already uh, conducted 100,000 tests and planning to contribute to the awareness of the people. Third one is about the need alternatives. Um, Nissing hold products uh, will increase the amount of a vegetable protein used as instant noodle ingredients in Japan to 1,100 tons per year um, in equivalent of the carbon uh, unit by 2030. The cup noodles has the ingredients of uh, pork and also the uh, soy uh, beans meat. It is a hybrid meat and it is called the uh, mysterious meat in Japan. So uh, we are going to increase the vegetable protein content in the future. The fourth one is food loss and waste related issues. The Nishin Food Group uh, will, by 2030, reduce the total amount of waste from sales and distribution in Japan by 50% compared to 2015, so that we can create a sustainable supply chain. The waste uh, from the uh, production system is recycled to 95.5%. So, uh, we commit to these four principles from Nishin Group. So uh, the malnutrition is a problem uh, taken up by the N4G summit and the food industry must take it very seriously. That we have to work with the diversified stakeholders to solve this problem. Nishin um, Group will use uh, nutrition profilings and try to improve our product. Tasty, uh, wholesome food and also the uh, uh, alternative meat and the cultured meat, we will be using the food technology to enable them. 
So we will be working on the wellness and environment so that we can contribute to realizing the well-being world in the future. And that is our vision. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, Mr. Andrew, thank you very much. Sustainability and well-being is two pillar of the policies based on that uh, food allergy and other social issues are to be tackled. It's not just for the world in Japan, but also to the global society that would shed a good light onto unresolved gap. And now I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Hata from Nippon Han Food Group. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, I'm Hata. I truly appreciate this opportunity being invited and have a chance to talk about our activities. So to the global nutrition improvement, what we can do as with as our three commitment. Well, let me explain one by one. First of all, Mission Nobara Company or corporate philosophy is shown here, which actually give us the uh, liaison data to the society. So, so under the basic theme of joy of eating, our company creates a culture that makes an each and contributes to society. And our company is a place where employees can feel truly happy and fulfilled. Let me explain a bit about our group. In 1942, our company group was established. Starting with ham and sausage production, we gradually expanded our scope of the business. And sales breakdown is shown here. Uh, the fresh meat, 57%, and ham and sausage, 11%, and processed food, 19%, and marine products and dairy products uh, is together like 9%. So the most of the ingredients are basically animal-based protein. Having said that, sales in the global market is just 11%. So this is the part we can actually uh, further grow based on the mo momentum in Japanese market. And our business actually covers 159 farms and fish farming. And totally, there are more than 560 region worldwide, we have the footprint. And we truly appreciate the production of each site and pay respect and also try to make them use them all to through that vertical integration of the business and also develop and plan and manufacturing the the value or the products and services we actually provide can provide to the market so our vision 2030 is actually positioned as a milestone for the direction of the company and also in order to realize vision 2030 we actually review the important material issues and we end up with five so business strategy and sustainability strategy to be aligned and also proceed in the future and hopefully we can solve the social gap and issues so well this message unleash new protein for, for a new potential for protein excuse me so we'd like to expand the potential of the protein which is the source of the living creature and with the sustainable and stable business activities, we'd like to create the variety and kind of colorful life of the people in the society. Having said that, these are the five materiality we identified. So the stable procurement and supply of the protein, food diversity, sorry, diversify and health, contributing to the uh, sustainable environment and co-creation and share prosperity with the local communities and society and employee development and respect for diversity. To each of them, we tried to identify the measure and carry out. 
And the protein is one of the key element and nutrition factor for the growth of the people, especially the animal protein uh, included in the beef, pork, and chicken actually include essential amino acid, nine types, which cannot be produced in human body. Domestically, the amount of the distribution of the meat in our group or share is like 20%. So we are in a position, the critical position to distribute protein in a Japanese market. At the same time, one day consum uh, intake of the protein per day, per capita, is 71 grams. And 2010 onwards, actually this amount has been declining. So maintaining an improvement of the amount of the protein intake is one of the key tasks we have to achieve throughout the activity. And there are other areas uh, of our commitment about allergy. So we'd like to expand the choice or option for the food for those who are who are suffering from the allergy. And the second point is the population issue. So with the increase of the population of the globe, sometimes uh, we, in some future, we may face the shortfall of the feed to the animals. So. The R&D for the, uh, the way of producing these necessary feed, at the same time, we focus on the out alternative meat based on the, the vegetable ingredients. And also, we'd like to support the cognitive function um, by utilizing the protein technology. So we'd like to come up with very useful material and products to this area as well. So these are the specific goal and action plan and key indicators. The first item, the food allergy related area by 2030, related volume, uh, related products um, shipment will be 4 billion, uh, 4 billion yen. And also we are going to launch the test kit for the test uh, allergy test. And Plant-derived protein, uh, 10 billion yen worth, and also alternative protein, R&D, will be preceded. preceded. Um, that will enable us to produce new products. The third point, uh, this is about the development and research for the material which support the cognitive function. So we should be able to provide 3 million new per year by FY 2026. So for the first food allergy initiative, in fact, this started from the consultation or the request from a mother who has the, uh, the children suffering from allergy, food allergy in 1996, that was the trigger. So in 2007, we established the dedicated factory, and in that factory, we don't use seven identified materials which causing the allergy problem. So the idea is that with or without allergy, we hope the consumers and the customers enjoy eating together. And also under disaster situation, some food to be maintain its quality without causing the change of the quality to cause the allergy. So also the allergen test kit will be further enhanced as a part of this activity and initiative. Expansion of the choice of the protein intake source. So to increase the choice, the plant-based protein food by using the soybeans and other plant products, we actually created original brand, uh, original plant-based meat with our own brand. And utilizing our know-how, handling that meat, we actually add 
the, the line of the product which covered the Chinese cuisine by utilizing the plant-based protein. And 2019, we actually use the culture meat research uh, together with the integrity culture. And also the uh, for other alternative protein research will be conducted in the coming years. And in this area, uh, we focus on the media, the, or actually the products uh, which actually release the uh, tiredness of the mental and physical condition. The media is a new product launched in November this year. Sorry, the 1st of December this year. So psychological, physical tiredness will be mitigated with the use of this product. And we were able to get the pro uh, patent and also successfully launch the product in the market. And also we'd like to devise the form of this content for different type of the product like milkshake and others. So Nippon Ham Group, we take advantage of the free idea and also the flexible free idea and R&D. We'd like to expand and increase the choices of the customers to deliver the joy of eating. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hata. So protein is a very uh, critical nutri nutrient, and at the same time, under these circumstances, the uh, uh, livestock is the uh, uh, CO2 emission industries. Therefore, that it is very difficult to increase those meats. So you are working on the alternative protein and also less burden to the environment type of uh, livestock that you are uh, currently studying. So it is very useful. So uh, you are one of the top runner in Japan uh, industry, we have a high expectation for that. And also, Mr. Ando also mentioned uh, that uh, uh, universality of the food is very important. And the people who are suffering from the food allergies make sure that they will also enjoy the food as long as other people. So thank you very much for your contribution. Now, moving on to the uh, Hayashibara CEO, Mr. Yasuba, please. Thank you very much for your introduction. My name is Yasuba of Hayashibara. Very nice to meet you today. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to speak to you. And also at the time of the uh, N4G summit, the uh, MAF and uh, other stakeholders, thank you very much for holding this summit. So first of all, I would like to introduce what Hayashibara is. The Hayashibara uh, use uh, biotechnology to uh, come up with the uh, uh, multifunctional accent. That the, uh, uh, for 138 years since we started our business as a syrup manufacturer in Okayama, we have consistently produced a product that enriched our diet lift. By combining the power of a microorganism and an enzyme, which are the blessing of nature, with naturally derived raw materials, we have developed multifunctional um, carbohydrates and also provide materials that enrich people's lives and contribute to the health and happiness in confectionery and others. So the source of our business activity is a global environment and the blessing of the nature. We are promoting technology and research that will contribute to solving social issues such as food loss, global malnutrition and in climate change and we would like to take this opportunity to express our commitment now please look at the left hand side of the slide this is a Hayashibara vision and also a 2030 is our goal so our vision is to really using the horned biotechnology and also unique um, development of the materials we also want to improve the value of the corporation. And also, you really have to have people and business and environment. All three elements uh, have to have the balance. And if you can see on the right hand side, we created sustainability action plan. So uh, there are four materialities in the sustainability, especially number one, contribution to increasing health and life expense, and also to stable securement of food, improve food productivity and reduce waste. 
and uh, these are our goal and to produce this we have to have a people three improvement in employee engagement and also number four reduction of environmental impacts this is very critical responsibility for us i'd like to explain to you what we are doing in the following pages so uh, you can also see this in our website, but this is the uh, CO2 emissions and also our target in 2030. Uh, by 2030, uh, we want to achieve the 46% uh, uh, reduction against the FY2013, same as the government of Japan. So that improving the productivities and also energy savings. So increase, uh, decreasing the overall CO2 commissions. And also we really want to uh, use the uh, local sources and also using the solar powers. And at the same time, uh, we uh, also procure sustainable materials. The, uh, uh, we use uh, this ascorbic acid and uh, uh, as a raw materials that we also produce the traceability for this. And uh, from now on, um, I would like to mention about the uh, commitment that we make. The uh, Hayashibara by 2030 will contribute to promote a safe, sustainable and healthy diet that supports people and planetary health by utilizing the unique functions of our food ingredients with stakeholders. And we set uh, three goals. Number one, pave the way for healthier and a more sustainable food systems for all. We aim to help developing 100 products by 2025 and 200 products by 2030. Number two, reduce environmental impacts and also support the people engaged in agriculture. We improve the overall quality of the earth and also reducing the use of the chemical. Uh, and also number three is improve the productivity and quality of food manufacturers to reduce food loss and also waste from the food industry. We support 100 cases annually by utilizing the food processing technologies and expert knowledge. So we will leave no one. So uh, uh, the earth have to be always healthy and also people who live on there also have to be uh, healthy. So how Hayashibara can contribute to this target and how to maintain the well-being? So I'd like to give you some case studies. So uh, this is the Torre Hallows. So uh, I'd like to give you several features of that. For example, that the soaking apples or vegetables in a solution of a Torre Hallows can reduce discoloration as you can see on the slide. And also uh, soaking them in a solution uh, will keep the crispy longer, which means that their shelf lives is extended. And also it will contribute to the reduction of the food loss. And today I would like to uh, explain in detail about the stabilization of the protein so that uh, when the proteins are dried or heated, they undergo a process called denaturation, which is a deterioration of the protein. In the food industry, for example, trehalose can be used in the processing of meat, fish or soy beans, and then make it less dry and more tender and juicier. It is also used for the agriculture and also livestock. So uh, Hayashibara is working to promote the consumption of a protein in a tasty and an easy to eat way to prevent frailty because frailty has been the drawing attention in the world. Specifically, Hayashibara is using the effect of trehalos, which stabilizes protein to promote the use of soy protein, uh, which is now attracting attention as a sustainable food in addition to meat and then fish. As I said, that the uh, trehalose has a quality of a preserving effect on protein and other nutrition ingredients, but it is also being used in the similar way in agricultural sector, which is attracting a great deal of attention. So that the, uh, the uh, bio fertilizers um, can be used and also it can be the biopesticides. 
So uh, recent research has shown that the trehalos induce resistance to the environmental stress, which is inherent in crops, and the trehalos has an effect as a so-called biostimulant. So that the, uh, as described above, that we have started to contribute to the reduction of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. So uh, it is not enough for the uh, material manufacturers such as us to make a contribution by working alone in order to achieve our goals of global health and well-being for all, then we will continue to think in and discuss these issues more deeply and contribute to the realization of a sustainable society by strengthening our partnership with a wide range of stakeholders. Healthy planet and well-being for all. This is the mission of the Hayashibara Corporation. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. Harris Barra, thank you. Mr. Yasuba, thank you very much. So, trehalos and other materials you actually developed, well, actually upstream of the um, supply chain, uh, you can actually reach out. And also, the reduction of the downstream matter, sorry, <laughs> reduction of the, uh, the food loss in downstream matter can be also covered with your technology and products. So, not just the highest para, but the many other Japanese companies for doing the similar business may have a good sort of chance to make a contribution to society. Now I'd like to invite Mr. Nishi from Ajinomoto. Thank you very much. My name is Nishi, CEO of Ajinomoto. The first of all, for the opening of this um, nutrition summit, um, I first would like to show my appreciation for having such a great seven sessions as a part of the program. So let me summarize my point and our activities. So our company's sort of concept of the nutrition is the nutrition without compromise. So there are two gentlemen, so left hand side from you, uh, Kikunai Ikeda, the professor for Tokyo University. He actually um, studied in Germany in 1909 and compared their body and his own body. He astonished how good they are well sort of nutri um, the nutrition condition of those German people. That prof, uh, Dr. Haya Ikeda actually used the, uh, the seaweed. The umami element is glutamic acid, which is the base of the umami amino acid. So with that, uh, he thought that he would be able to improve the nutrition level of Japanese people. And then with that, together with our originator of the company, original uh, founder of the company actually uh, agreed to produce those uh, products. And now we provide globally the supplement and amino acid use products to make contribution for the good life of the people. And also at a molecule level, with scientific approaches in R&D, we have been able to produce uh, involve, uh, innovations. And this year we marked 110 years anniversary. So with that, uh, we have been promoting the improvement of the food and nutrition by utilizing amino acid. So we set the sort of goal that the two outcomes are shown here, reduce our environmental impact 50% and, sorry, uh, in help extend the healthy life expectancy 1 billion people. So the health of the society and people are actually available based on the healthy earth and global society. And what is shown in the sort of circle in red is, as you can see, the food systems. What is shown in left is, well, the sustainability of the agriculture is vital to our business. And having said that, diversity, biodiversity, water, and sustainability these are the things companies 
or business should be responsible for. However, from the perspective of continuous growth, uh, we as a company to be fully engaged in continuous promotion of the health by healthy agricultural activities. So well, nutrition balanced meat meal for everyone is one of the key factors to resolve all the issues we concern. So the food and seasonings should be available in a reasonable price wherever you go. And if those products are well reflecting the needs of the lo local community, we can actually achieve our goal. So with that, we would not compromise for the nutrition. So the nutrition nutrition without compromise is our stance. We do not compromise to the access to the food, access to the better nutrition and improvement of the community. So in order not to give up the tasty net, we use the uh, umami technology to realize high level tastiness and reduce the salt and sodium. Second, in order to not to compromise the food, we consider and try to improve the distribution or delivery and all the sort of the process of our products delivery in a market uh, in the market and at the same time we will continuously improve the quality of the product to further make contribution for the improvement of the health especially take advantage of our technology in amino acid and protein and this is the global salt intake per each country. And to make the better balance of nutrition of the people, we focus on tasty, low salt. So excess intake of the salt is leading to the risk of the cardiovascular disease with high blood pressure. And about 20%, like 1.6 billion people, are actually taking salt too much or they are actually in the context of the excess in intake of the sodium and it's very serious matter and to this area we collaborate with the academia and try to find out impact of the low salt dieting in the united states we studied and instead of using salt we replace it with MSG and umami. And with the use of the umami, actually we can reduce successfully the amount of salt involved in a food like 3%. And the similar study is actually conducted in the University of Tokyo. And accordingly, in total, one serve of meals, we can use 21% less salt than conventional meal serving. So this is a element or the aspect we can make great contribution to the society also we have the application which enable us to reduce the salt as many as possible in many different aspects of the eating habit and eating behavior and the other thing i'd like to mention is about the healthy longevity the japan is super aging society but not just in japan in order to maintain the good healthy life of the people from the beginning to the end uh, it is quite important to think about the nutrition so therefore uh, as a long-term target we made the commitment so the first is the activity to support a healthy tasty salt deduction and second reinforcement the portfolio which enforce and and, uh, and enhance the good health and nutrition and third the uh, encourage healthy behavior and fourth the improved nutrition and nutrition literacy of ajinomoto employee around the world so these are the activities and in order to make them realize a food and well-being relationship to be tackled with the academia and expertise and utilize that know-how in various aspects of the business and create a good-sized ecosystem all around the world. So 
would like to proceed and continue our efforts for the nutrition improvement. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. So you are planning to extend the healthy longevity of 1 billion people. So you really want to solicit the changes of the behavior for the consumers. So up to now, four companies representative mentioned about the, their commitment to this uh, uh, N4G summit. So N4G summit, as I stated at the beginnings, that uh, we asked the uh, private companies to make a commitment, and this commitment is going to be led to the uh, behaviors and also the actions. So in Japan, that the 63 different companies and also organization of the uh, food industry already announced their commitment. So uh, this is going to be a great feature of this summit. So uh, at the N4G summit the commitment, is going to be uh, summarized uh, into an uh, action plan, and uh, we will be uh, really announcing those plans. So this action plan is going to be uh, really succeeded to the uh, N4G summit held in Paris next time. So this one is not the one time or one off type of activities, but that have to be continued. 63 companies and an organization's commitment uh, is going to be uh, summarized by the math and make it to four different categories. So according to these four different themes that uh, I would like to cover uh, your activities and also the direction for the future for the following discussion. So number one is the changes of the food system. So as is, we heard from the uh, people's uh, presentation, the current uh, way of doing uh, is not really uh, sustainable for the people to survive on the earth, on the earth. However, um, there is no uh, panacea, uh, which means that uh, you have to really look at the uh, each country's situation. We have the uh, uh, double uh, burden of the malnutrition, and even in the same country, that you have uh, uh, both sides of the problems. So that there is no uh, panacea yet. You really have to work in a, two different ways, and also. Also the productivity improvement and also the sustainabilities. So uh, for us to survive, uh, we always um, have to uh, minimize the burden and at the same time, the uh, nurture the people uh, in the world who are growing in the numbers so that the well-being and also quality of life uh, have to be maintained. So at any rate, we have to really change the food system. So as for the uh, food system transformation, um, we have uh, re two uh, representatives of the companies uh, who can talk about this uh, food system transformation. Um, hope to have their comments. So first of all, from the uh, uh, Hayashibara, Mr. Yasuba, please. So um, you mentioned about the uh, uh, biotechnologies and also the uh, raw materials um, experience, a very uh, uh, useful product for you. So uh, from Hayashibara Corporation, what type of contribution can you do? And can you uh, expand these cases, not just in Japan, but also the overseas? Would you like to uh, comment on this point, please? Thank you very much. As I stated in my presentation, the functionality of our material, well, there are uh, four categories, the productions, processing, distribution, and also uh, consumption and also waste. For these um, categories that I think that uh, we can contribute to them. So I mentioned about the um, trehalos. The, the feature of the trehalos is to maintain the quality of the uh, food so that the consumption and the waste categories that uh, we can improve so that we can extend the uh, uh, expiration date so that uh, we can reduce the waste. And even in a distribution stage, like um, uh, we can uh, maintain the food in the room temperature, the uh, refrigerations or the freezers are not maybe equipped in the Southeast Asia or some of the develop, developing countries, then even during the distribution, we can maintain the food. Meanwhile, the first category, production. 
for this production stage that, uh, as I stated, the uh, biofertilizers uh, can maintain the quality of the food and also improve the yield of the uh, produce. Uh, it's already used in some field, so I really want to expand the use of it. And uh, from another point of view, uh, we made a commitment. Uh, we want to provide well-being for the, all the people in the world. So the critical thing here is nutrition, but nutrition itself is not enough. So we have to really combine it with a tastiness, have to be delicious, because that is the joy of our eating. So uh, uh, the emission reduction uh, activity is taking place, and uh, now the shift is taking place from the animal protein to the plant protein, and uh, trehalose, well, trehalose uh, is not just ours, but uh, there are many other trehalose uh, can also use to make it tasty and also easy to eat. That type of food can be produced in the future. So that's what we can contribute to this portion. So not just the changing the uh, meat protein to the plant protein, and if it is not tasty, people don't want to eat it. So the well-being means that you can also have a joy of eating. Thank you very much. Now, moving on to the Nishin uh, group, Mr. Ando. At your companies, the, you started your business from instant noodles, and then you have a business in, in many countries. So I'm sure that each country has their own conditions. But when you look at the global situations, that the uh, how uh, you can promote the food system transformation and how the Japanese companies can contribute to this transportation, I would like to have your global view on it. So food system transformation. But before I go into that problem, I would like to talk about the nutrition challenges. Uh, there are some issues about the uh, nutrition uh, listings. I think that the standardization are coming in, the calorific figures and then POC, the protein, the carbohydrate uh, listings and the vitamins and the minerals and the salts and also saturated the fat that the uh, these uh, listings are standardized so far however the evaluation indicators nutrition profiling system um, it may not be easy to be understood by the consumers so uh, each country has their own way of doing it. For example, in case of Australia and in New Zealand, they have HSR. The, uh, this is a rating for the uh, uh, different ingredients in France, the new the uh, They are still um, competing against Italy, but uh, NPS, profiling systems uh, will be developed in each different country. And uh, I think it is a good step because it is easy for consumer to understand. And in our country too, uh, we are abiding the, uh, these different guidelines of each country, so we'll be abiding them. So uh, these completed food, like you eat this food and it can be meal or it can be snack and uh, one completed food must have this type of uh, 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 list however if you were eating a meal like washoku japanese food uh, you don't have to have it but because you can have the balance with a combination of a different food but um, in our uh, product that it is completed um, food for one meal so that we need to really abide these guidelines. So um, there are some issues there. And again, we have to really solve these type of a problem. Another point is about the food system transformation. As Hayashibara-san, as uh, representative said that the uh, uh, technology uh, on the supply side is making a progress, 
but when you look at the overall situation, uh, you also MAF also announced that the 2050 model, what would be the 2050 model? Uh, 9.7 billion people on the planet and uh, 5.8 billion tons and 3.6 billion tons of grains and uh, so even uh, supply and demand i think that uh, these are well balanced but the balancing of the supply and then demand that this is the forecast for the two, 20 years in ahead so that the environment and climate change will give the problems so that uh, it is very uh, challenging complex issues when it comes to agriculture, technology will advance. And uh, what you have to think about is that the, how to think about the original calorie, uh, the food ingredients are uh, interpreted as the uh, grain um, value, uh, which is original uh, calories for grains. The, in the consumption of these four grains, how do we use them in an efficient way? So animal protein is tasty. I love it, but uh, plant protein has to be taken up more uh, widely. We have to promote the plant protein um, otherwise, we can't get the balance. So having said that, to shift to the um, plant protein, we need to have a technological advancement. Um, animal protein has the uh, essential amino acid and also the tastiness. The soybeans can really reproduce the, the uh, tastiness. We need to have a food technology to really uh, uh, emulate the tastiness of the animal protein in the plant proteins. And uh, 3.6 billion tons of grains have to be well utilized to make food, but may it may not be sufficient. So that's my concern. And that we really have to study. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Handel mentioned that, as shown in the slide, the productivity, productivity enhancement and sustainability, how to make that both happening or available. That is the issue for the global society. And in a context, how would the sourcing of the protein would be? And also the nutrition labeling. Well, for the labeling, actually, the one who actually look at on the label should be able to understand what is shown on the label unless it can't really useless. And also the current um, the tendency is somehow excess intake of the certain type of the nutritious element so that again, not to be corrected in the course of time as Mrs. mentioned. And also, as a second uh, larger point, which is the innovation of the food related business. And to this point, well, although it's slight said digitization, but in the food loss context, many players in the area actually try to make the matching between those excess food uh, left over or the unused food and for those who need them and how to make innovation in that context for the networking or procedure or the items which are needed. That's a big question. And uh, Mr. And already mentioned that how to create tasty plant-based protein and how to make that possible is the key. And as mentioned earlier, with the consideration of the environmental impact, we should make a good balance of use of the animal protein and plant-based protein. And also to this point, I'd like to invite the other comment from Mr. Hara. Yes, so 
Yes, the World 2020 2030, uh, we expect the 2-3% improvement of the use of the protein use globally. That's our assumption. And also needs or the demand of the animal protein will be increasing along with the increase of the population. And the protein needs increase globally. That is, well, actually becoming, but when we think about the feed for those animals, it needs to be also considered because it's likely to be shortfall. And in case of Japan, 75% of the feed for the animals are imported. And with that, for uh, animal protein as well as for uh, plant-based animal uh, protein would like to provide stable supply to the market. So with that, I'd like to make three points. So the first point is conventional animal protein. To this, we should pay more consideration to the environment and also society. And also, we should envision this sustainable supply to the market. And also, we are aiming at reduction of the uh, fossil-based uh, energy, minus 43%. And at the same time, we would like to reduce and suppress the, uh, the gas generated by the farming and also the kettles. The methane gas produced by the kettles needs to be reduced, and we are going to use certain type of the feed to reduce the amount. DX and DXI, so-called smart pig farming, are currently under plan. Uh, we can manage and monitor 24 hours a day, and also we can sense the disease prevent uh, disease and some uh, the sign of the uh, unusual situation of the farming and plant and that would be very futuristic. Manual welfare policy that was generated short. So based on that, we're going to generate the policy and guidelines and rules to make sure our plans are fully implemented. As I said, uh, alternative proteins, well, the diversified choice and preference of the customers are to be considered. So we need innovation to meet their needs and make them satisfy. And also, um, we should disseminate the information to raise the awareness about those products and knowledge about them. So in a company, uh, flavor and oil production, we pursue further the tastiness of the products, I mean, for the plant protein. And also cultured meat, um, the texture and also the cost and so forth needs to be accepted by the consumers. And for that, again, we do need more communication, information dissemination. Also the quality management or quality maintenance to be well established along with the newly introduced uh, the bills and regulations. And regarding the allergy, uh, with the HCPs or healthcare professionals and government and other relevant stakeholders would like to uh, pursue together. So far, we already provided the allergen test kit and other relevant products. And also we are developing the preventive food for the children who are likely to have allergy reaction to certain food in the future. So platform is also need to be generated for that work. We have the, uh, the Food Future Foundation to support the allergy related disease area funding. And also we actually plan a certain cooking contest and covering the uh, the cooking items uh, for related to allergy. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for sharing your idea. So along with the global landscape and the sort of dynamics, Japanese companies 
to actually excel their expertise and make the sort of possible contribution as much as possible. That's the maybe that direction you all are aiming at. You all of you just mentioned the alternative uh, protein or the plant-based proteins. Unfortunately, in Japan, food tech startup funding or the support in Japan is rather poor, not so strong. So then the question is how to take advantage of those new uh, startups or technology for this area, how to raise them, and how to set the direction for the future. So, well, um, the protein, but well, animal based um, protein, and also cultured meat. Uh, there are two sort of things that we have to think as for the alternative choice for the future. And uh, certainly this is a kind of long-term approach. The plant-based protein development, maybe it takes more shorter, I mean, not so long, but the culture meat may need more time. And having said that, these new products, innovative products, but the company actually have a kind of advanced investment. Well, at least we should keep a sort of the space of advanced investment for the future development of the company or the growth of the company. And that is actually for the food tech area in this context. The soybean or the soybean based protein well, actually, Japanese people love soybeans and products from the soybean. So technology pertaining to this is very much accumulated compared with other companies, uh, compared with other countries. So for example, the, uh, the hamburgers using the veggie meat, the taste is as almost equal to the real meat, beef. So then, this is the area, as a company, we should earmark sufficient budget. And also, we can't do it by ourselves. So among the companies, we have to find out a way of collaboration, though it might be a bit complicated. So, soybean protein, and not just from the, uh, the soybean, but the protein based on vegetables and plant needs to be further carried out. And actually, we should make sure that the plant-based protein to be effectively used in the market. Um, for that, we do need a very effective way of production and also support of the technology and innovation with something like uh, corporate inside venture or the venture collaboration and so forth. So we also think about the choosing choice of those sort of uh, the way to further drive this area. And with regards to the, the protein use, well, the healthy and low CO2 emission are also important factor, but vegetarians, vegans, and haral food, these are also the element to be considered. So the plant-based protein is useful in this area as well. So sorry, I'm talking about something different from your original question, but well, thank you very much. So Mr. Ando's comment and also the next point. Well, the promotion of the behavioral change of the individual level, that's actually come up to my mind while listening to your comment. So that uh, how the consumers will actually utilize this new food, and uh, you mentioned about vegetarian, but um, each individual are really, the mindset is changing. 
uh, just day by day so that uh, we really have to cater to the needs of the individual too. So corporations um, supply and also the consumers demand. How do we uh, uh, really connect these two? Though when you uh, produce new products, uh, always that have to be uh, socially accepted to really uh, taken into the real food. So you really have to connect the innovation and also the social acceptance. So you really have to think about the nutritional behavior change in consumers. So this has to be another action. So uh, Mr. Nishiyo Bajinomoto, you are working on the lots of innovation in the food and uh, providing them to the world market. So based on your experience, maybe you could shed light to the future. Well, consumers' uh, behavioral change is a very uh, difficult problem because uh, we can't really change our food just because we have uh, innovations. That when it comes to metabolic syndrome, in Japan, even though they are metabolic syndrome sufferings, about 70% of the people cannot really change their lifestyle. They just procrastinate. In the last uh, 10 years or so, 41 different prefectures, uh, we worked on the improvement of the uh, uh, food lifestyle. And uh, there are three ways that we can improve it. The first one is the uh, regional corporations. Why did it work? Because we have the National Nutrition uh, Study Survey. So uh, using the other pref prefectures as an indicator and uh, compare the numbers among different prefectures. So if you have these comparative data, you can continue working on them. Second one is that the uh, salt reduction or shortage of the vegetables, that uh, connecting these things with the local food or local food culture. And uh, if we can explain that uh, this is a reason why you have too much salt or this is why you don't have enough vegetables, then when they are convinced of these things that you can start changing it. The third one is to use the local food um, this year we had Olympic Games, but uh, JOC top athletes eat with the uh, local um, produce or uh, local food. And uh, that can be the uh, uh, conspicuous event so that uh, it is joyful to really eat these food. So these three are the successful cases. But uh, still 70% of the people don't change their uh, diet habits. So that uh, as N4G Summit proposes, um, usually people stay at the working place seven hours or eight hours so that maybe the meal there can be improved. And also you really have to um, educate the children about the nutrition. Um, th that was the uh, uh, Japanese um, case, but uh, I think that we are also using that in ASEAN countries. Thank you. So in this side event, that uh, food education uh, is one independent session so that uh, we experience, um, we shared the cases of the uh, school meals in uh, ASEAN countries. So even though it is shown as a text that you really have to um, execute it as the actual lifestyle. So from the uh, uh, Nippon ham, well, same for Ajinomoto, but the exercise and the food are closely related. And then that is a, a big cycle towards the uh, healthy lifestyle. So uh, uh, would you like to uh, explain a little bit about the food and an exercise? Thank you. Uh, in the materiality of our mission, uh, we try to uh, uh, coexist and also co-prosper uh, with uh, food and, and exercise. That is our mission. So we visit, visit school and actually provide the classes there. 
the uh, uh, we have uh, certified nutritionist and also certified sports nutritionist and also the uh, allergy uh, nutritionist so when it comes to sports nutritionist that uh, uh, we have uh, Hokkaido fighters, the uh, baseball team, so that uh, they can also work with them and also use uh, sport team. As for the elderly, uh, we have a frailty issue. Uh, we have a cooperation with the Kansai Medical University to study about the uh, protein intake and also frailty so when the elderly people do uh, sufficient exercise and also intake the protein then they can increase the basic metabolism especially uh, over 70 year old uh, about 70 uh, uh, 20 percent of the uh, 70 year old or over don't take enough protein so we really have to solve this problem um, you have to combine nutrition and also exercise to we have a kubari exercise uh, so that the people don't get into the frailty and i talked about the imzado peptide uh, this is closely related to the recognition power ability and uh, we also studying that relation to the exercise the migratory birds uh, can fly for such a long time and uh, that MZO peptide is, is exists in the breast uh, muscle of the uh, migratory birds and uh, those drinks are also provided for the uh, athletes. So we are also studying the relation of the two. Thank you. Thank you very much. So well, just saying it's easy, but practice is difficult. But that applies to the change of behavior we post here. And, well, when we read this, how to comprehend and interpret that phrase is one thing. And also, actually, the consumers, in terms of their buying or purchasing action, they should be well motivated based on understanding. So. This is the issue all the stakeholder to be engaged in. And the last focus point is about support for the nutrition improvement in developing and emerging countries. Again, the support is not one way action, but the collaboration and joint effort is quite important. And this is one of the key themes for the nutrition summit this time. And also Japan would like to make a good contribution for the improvement of this part. Here, the partnership is quite effective. Uh, Mr. Hayashibara mentioned the partnership is key. This means that government, private, and also international organization currently have many collaboration with the private sectors. So the, Mr. Hayashibara, I'd like to ask you how you like to make progress uh, this partnership in your term. Thank you very much. Well, in fact, the other day, uh, the Prime Minister mentioned that the double burden of the malnutrition. And what Mr. Kishida said is that the uh, lifestyle disease and low nutrition these two things are happening at the same time right now. So the lifestyle disease, the researches and treatment, um, this is the area uh, which we apply to the material development in our business and collaboration with the uh, academia, how to handle the uh, neutral element and also the, the fat, acidity, etc. But malnutrition, which happening in the developing countries and emerging countries, to this matter, not just providing the materials or the, uh, the, the things and goods, 
Rather, we should pay respect to the cultural difference of local sort of characteristics of that particular community and help them in a way they can actually become independent by themselves in the future. So trahalos, I just mentioned, um, trahalos can be applied to the fertilizer and other products. But with the use of this trahalos, the, uh, the people in the imagined country use less amount of chemical fertilizer, for example. And those farmers actually see the improvement or efficiency of the agricultural work or the more product, uh, more production. And once they actually feel that by themselves, and then they can further disseminate the activities and that will be contributing to the uh, decrease of exposure to the chemicals onto human bodies and use of the chemical stuffs and so forth. So the issue of the emerging market or the emerging countries, this is the matters rather challenging for Japanese companies to fully dive in uh, or fully engaged in. Therefore, uh, international organization, FAO, WFD, or government level may maybe collaborate together and the All Japan team or any team sort of structure like that help us, the private sector, to join. So having the international organization in the team enable us to identify what are the actual codes. And then with that, we, the private sector can think what we can actually contribute. That's the way maybe we perform our collaboration and support for the future. In Japan, uh, in Japan we have excellent products. Well, Nishin, Ajinomoto, Nippon Ham, uh, these are great companies that produce the food products and also in the material area. Likewise, many companies have high technology to produce safe and secure products and materials. To deliver these excellent products, we need the scientific evidence. And also, when we look around, we have some barriers. Uh, it means regulations. So in order to break through those regulations or any wall of the regulations, just making efforts as private sector is not so effective. Therefore, in the government level, we expect more harmonization of the regulation by which we can deliver good quality products and material to emerging market and countries. And also uh, those company, food product company can make the products on site locally. And that's the sort of picture I have in mind. Thank you very much. So this time in a discussion from the international organization, nutrition improvement is not the nutrition issue, rather it's the matter of improvement of social system. So with that, the collaboration is quite important to each players like the government, international society or international organization and companies. So these key pl players to be collaborate together. So next, I'd like to ask Mr. Nishi Ajinomoto. So you have your company actually developed business in emerging market quite a lot. And in order to improve and scale up your business, what would be the um, necessary task and element to be considered? Thank you. So earlier I mentioned about Japanese case and uh, we collaborate with 41 prefectures. That basically the nutrition, nutrition matter is the local issues. So for example, in overseas, the Ghana and Vietnam, they have totally different issues and problems. So when we tackle this problem, first, the, the partnership is, of course, vital. So in case of uh, Ghana, um, with the support of the government, oh, sorry, the, the people on site and also the NGO are quite important. 
So we should have rather long term sort of time scale. But a country like Vietnam, at the beginning, for example, the well, elementary school of the Vietnam, we tried to implement the school meal system. We have been doing this more than 10 years and totally 1.4 million pupils in elementary school, we are able to provide school meat like the one in Japan. But starting was one of the elementary school in Ho Chi Minh City, with the support of the uh, mayor of the city, and also the committees, education committees there. That activity was gradually expanded and also implemented in different schools. And so my point is that when we think about scalability, it is vital to have the backup by the Japanese government and those local government key persons like mayors and politicians, as well as the education committee members. And also from Japan, we also got the support from the uh, nutrition research organization or academic organizations. So what we can provide what we could provide to Vietnam from Japan side is that we actually provide not just the service or the products or food, we actually put some uh, know-how which did not exist before. And also we set up the contribution, sorry, the donation uh, lecture course in Hanoi University to nurture the um, dietitians. And Mr. Nakamura, Tei Nakamura mentioned yesterday, mentioned the similar project, but this is the way we scale up the, the business. Well, you we can start small and with the collaboration with the private sector and also the NGO, but when you scale up, uh, you should link that activity to the support in the government level or the local government level. Thank you very much. At the beginning of the uh, uh, N4G summit, the Prime Minister uh, Kishida uh, uh, pledged the 300 billion yen uh, into this project. So root, uh, grassroots uh, activities and also governmental level uh, investment. So uh, these two projects will be utilized in the, uh, the much efficient way and then you can enjoy the scale of benefit. And um, so that the hunger will reduce uh, in the world and also the people's nutrition level will improve. The uh, uh, UN um, system summit held in September, the, uh, they uh, discussed about the reviewing the school meals. And currently we are uh, looking at the system of school meals. Even yesterday, the, uh, we've shown you the video of the school meals and uh, uh, it can also be a, a motivation of kids to go to school and also they learn about the uh, nutrition. Um, that also, uh, it's going to be the basis for the uh, growth, the healthy growth of the children in the future. So the, our experience in Japan uh, can also be reflected in the other uh, countries' children. So we have covered four different points. Thank you very much. So to summarize this side event, um, uh, we will be showing you the action plan. So in front of you, we have distributed action plan, the NG4 compact uh, implementation, the action plan with Japanese food industry stakeholders, uh, looking at the uh, global nutrition uh, enhancement and also Japanese experience and the public and then partner part, uh, public private partnership in Japan. The uh, we have discussed on all these areas so that we talk about the uh, food system transformation, promote of the uh, food related innovation in business, promote of the national behavior change in consumers and support for nutrition improvement in developing and emerging countries. So so these four will be the pillars for the future action plan. So 
uh, these four uh, action plan will be shared by the next Energy for Summit. So hope to maintain the uh, uh, waves of these activities so that uh, by the Paris uh, Summit, that uh, Japanese companies are ready to uh, present what they will be, they are doing uh, in these four areas. So for two days, starting from yesterday, we have invited the uh, people uh, both in Japan and also overseas to discuss about the action plans. So at last, I would like to say thank you for the uh, corporations and also the uh, stakeholders who have participated in this summit and also the people who have been watching this summit both in Japan and overseas. Thank you very much. And uh, these activities will not end at just the end of the two days. This motivations and also this um, activities will be really expanding into the future. And with that, I would like to conclude this session. Thank you very much for staying with us until the end of the session.